Hey YouTube, it's David from Live Forever Die Trying, and today I have another recommended reading list by subject, this time on biohacking. Now, biohacking is something that I've been reading about and kind of following and experimenting a little bit with for the past few years. It goes hand in hand with longevity and life extension, as well as it encompasses some other fields as well. Um, now, a quick definition, biohacking is actually a really wide term. Um, it can be anything that basically modifies a natural biological process. So from something that you're familiar with, like GMO foods, to maybe something you've seen in the headlines recently, like DIY COVID vaccines that you can make in your garage, or even, you know, transcribing the Bible to DNA and injecting it in your thigh. It's a wide term and it can get far out there. You've got people that are injecting themselves with weird chemicals and using off the wall protocols and just really weird stuff. But what I'm recommending to you today is something I personally use and it's much more simple than that far out stuff. It's gonna be a self-improvement or self-help approach to biohacking. And the key concept is that if you want to improve certain metrics that are going to lead, lead to a better life, like diet, uh, fitness, or sleep, most of the things that we're focusing on should be measurable. So if it's sleep, for example, you want to sleep a target number of hours or you want to get a certain amount of deep sleep, um, you can use certain devices to physically measure what you're improving and take a scientific approach at achieving those results. So not everything we're gonna be talking about is gonna be like strict, far out experimental stuff. A lot of it's gonna be pretty grounded and simple things to do. Um, but without further ado, let's jump into it and see what we're talking about. All right, so the first book I'm gonna to recommend to you today is The Biohacker's Handbook. And this is co-authored by three gentlemen whose name I cannot pronounce, so I'm going to save myself that embarrassment and leave the link below. Um, now, this book's an absolute chunk coming in at over 500 pages plus sources, but it spends those 500 pages talking about only five topics and really drilling down and getting a full scope on those. And the reason I recommend this first is those five topics are like the cornerstones of your health. There's no sense in going out on limbs and exploring weird devices and weird techniques if you don't have your foundation. If you're not getting good night's sleep, if you're not eating correctly, if you're not exercising efficiently, there's no need to do the rest. If you have a potential max capacity of 100% of whatever your performance is and you're only at 60%, you want to close that gap before you try to take smart drugs or uh, use a device or what have you that tries to eke out another 5 to 10%. You'd much rather go from that 60 to 100 than your 60 to 65, for example. So the reason I recommend this book specifically is that it spends about 100 pages on each of those topics. And it really, really drills down on each topic. It gives you a lot of background information. You know, So if we're talking about sleep, how does the body actually... Um, go into sleep cycles, what are sleep spindles, what are the genetics that determine if you are a morning person, a night owl, or something in between. And it gives you all the background on how that system operates in the first place before prescribing solutions to fix certain aspects of it. Um, and it's really well sourced. I haven't found pretty much any information I disagree with in this book, or at least that I know to disagree with. But as always, it's well sourced and you want to check those sources for your additional reading. My one complaint is that they don't tell you what may be the most beneficial step to take first. And what I mean by that is if I'm looking at the sleep category, for example, you know, it might tell me to wear blue light blocking glasses or not increase my blood sugar uh, right before bed, like, you know, take a few hours off before you go to bed before eating or maybe it's prescribing an herbal tea that has been proven to help um, release melatonin or what have you. It will give me 20 tips, but it won't tell me statistically what is going to be the most efficient or 
provide the most benefits out of those. So those you'll have to check the studies. But that's pretty much my only complaint. This is going to give you a huge amount of baseline information and really is a lot to dig in. Personally, I've had this book for about three months and I've read through it twice and I keep coming back and trying to instill new practices from this book into my lifestyle. The second book we've had, um, I mentioned it was the most beautiful book of the year in a prior tag, but that is going to be Boundless by Ben Greenfield. Um, you might be familiar with Ben. He's pretty prolific on like the self-improvement and fitness scenes online. I believe he's been voted like America's top uh, personal trainer, as well as he has his own podcast. He's written multiple books and been on like the Joe Rogan show and stuff like that. Um, as a quick little asterisk warning, what have you, I'm a little bit less sure on some of the information in this book, specifically like EMF radiations, and a little bit of it, a little bit of it gets tinfoily for me at times. However, this book comes in at over 700 pages, and this is without sources. Now, hang on a second. The sources aren't in this book because they're actually online. He could not fit them in this book. Each chapter out of the 21 chapters there are links to a page online in which there's two to seven book recommendations as well as uh, hundreds of uh, resources and the scientific articles for each of the claims in this book. So even though parts of it I disagree with, which we're talking about biohacking, it's kind of on the cutting edge, not everything is perfectly known at the moment. So some of that inherently will be a little out there. but everything is backed up. Ben himself doesn't do longevity research or, you know, he's not a dietitian, but he has explored like certain areas really deep, like endurance training or ketogenics or what have you. But because he isn't well-versed in everything he talks about, everything's well-researched because he it has to be or else he wouldn't have been able to write this book. This book is more like an encyclopedia where it goes less in depth about every realm of biohacking in relation to self-development and self-improvement. So it's gonna talk more about meditation and mind games and establishing thought patterns. It's gonna talk more about supplements to round out a balanced diet, as well as nootropics and smart drugs that you can take and warnings that come with those. It's also gonna talk about devices that you can use. For example, if you're working on your sleep, this book's going to tell you a lot of strategies you, you can improve it, but not necessarily a lot of ways you can measure it. In Boundless, we prescribe a lot of devices that you can use to measure what you're actually trying to implement. Um, for example, one of the things mentioned is the Aura Ring, like what I have here. So this is like a little bio, biometric device that you uh, wear on your fingertip, and it's going to measure stuff like heart rate variability, respiratory rate, your sleep stages. So when I'm uh, practicing information or trying out tips and experimenting with this book, I can measure the results, see what works and what doesn't work. But yeah, I'd recommend this book second because it's gonna cover a wider breadth of topics and more niche aspects, but you don't need to focus on a lot of this before you get the fundamentals down, like what you have in the Biohacker's Handbook. Finally, we have the Mind Illuminated. And the reason I recommend this meditation book is these guys talk a lot about the body. You know, what metrics do you need to improve? Where should your blood sugar be? How should your sleep cycle be? You know, how to improve the lymphatic system, how to um, improve balance of neurotransmitters. And that's all super valid. And both of those touch briefly on like mental patterns and meditation, but you can't get a full meditation guide that's well-rounded in either of those books, which is why I recommend The Mind Illuminated. So specifically, The Mind Illuminated is written by John Yates, who has a PhD in physiology as well as neuroscience and as a professor of both of those. This is written as a secular approach to meditation. So it's gonna leave the religious aspects out of it. Personally, that's how I got started in meditation. And while I'm curious about the religious aspects and it intrigues me, I'm not bought in. Um, so I like the secular approach. When you're trying to 
sell me on meditation. What I want to know is what are the scientific benefits? You know, it's been proven to increase gray matter in the brain, which correlates with intelligence. It's been proven to um, limit uh, emotional uh, responses, and it can give you a better control on anxiety as well as depression. Um, so personally, I had a terrible habit of meditation, but I have been practicing for about two years. Um, little 10 to 30 minute uh, excursions and trying to meditate. Um, but nonetheless, I have been practicing. I uh, started off with the mindfulness app, then moved to Calm, and then used the Pulse with the Aura Ring here. Um, and each of those were kind of entry level. I was looking for a little bit more. I've already noticed a little bit of benefits, a little bit of calming effects and what have you, but I needed something a little bit deeper to further understand what I was actually trying to accomplish. And that's where this book came in. Now, this is more of a manual. This isn't something you're gonna read front to back and put it down. This is something that you're gonna have to read over and over again because it builds off itself. You're not going to understand the fourth, fifth, sixth, or seventh step of this book until you've experienced the first, second, and third step of what you're trying to accomplish. But it's gonna give you a entry level a look at meditation and how to progress and what metrics will equal success in your practice. So for example, you come to the book knowing nothing about meditation. It's going to teach you how to breathe, what to focus on, and the patterns of thought to, um, that you're, you're going to encounter, and then what problems to look out for, and then what basically equates to success. It'll also give you metrics to when to start practicing on the next level. Personally, the reason why I recommend this book in a biohacking video is I have noticed one of the biggest improvements out of everything because of meditation. You know, I can build a better body through fitness and diet, and I know I can sleep better, but meditation has had a big impact on my waking life. Around five years ago, uh, I was in Costa Rica running around the jungle and I started having heart palpitations. So I'm like, okay, that's a little weird. Come back home, doing some running, get some more heart palpitations. Sitting at work behind a computer, entering data into a computer, uh, just like standard work stuff, I start getting heart palpitations. I'm like, okay, I need to see a cardiologist. Go to the cardiologist, get stress work done. Then I go to my general physician, get my um, biometrics tested, you know, see if my blood pressure's acting up, see if my heart is beating uh, erratically or what have you. And then talking to both of them, I got the same diagnosis. I don't have a heart condition. I have general anxiety disorder. And personally, I've lived a decent life. I'm really privileged and I haven't really had huge obstacles in my life that would, in my opinion, justify having anxiety. But nonetheless, my heart acts up under weird situations, entering data in a computer or, you know, running around the jungle I can get. We saw lots of snakes and spiders and shit. But regardless, that's something that I started having more and more of a problem with over the past two years. However, once I started meditating, I could see these patterns emerging. You know, my skin starts getting clammy, my heart starts beating faster than the palpitations start. So being versed in meditation and even a low level of practice like I'm doing, I can catch those thought patterns starting, that bodily reaction. I can focus on the breath, increase oxygen, slow the heart rate, and I can get around the downsides of my general anxiety disorder. So personally, that's why I put this in here as well. It's been a big help for me. But yeah, to me, these books are the true self-help. You know, you can read your business books and you can read your um, How to Win Friends and Influence People or your Miracle Morning and whatnot. And you know there's value in those. You can learn to be a better conversationalist or a better salesman. But to me, improve you first. Establish that foundation. Get your brain so it's thinking at optimum levels. Then work on those tactics. These, in my opinion, are the true self-help books that you're gonna get the most mileage on. 
If you want a further in-depth look on any of these books, please let me know in the comments below. Um, as always, uh, subscriptions, likes, and ringing the bell help as well. Uh, push me along in the algorithm and help me make more videos. I appreciate all y'all. Thank you. Bye-bye.